I am Isabella Green, also known as Mrs. Mullins now, or Miss Green. I currently work at Green Hill High School in the physics department, and before this I worked in the math department teaching Algebra 1. I attended Trevecca Nazarene University here in Nashville, mainly because it was a liberal arts, and I wanted that full-on experience of just different classes. Um, and I studied, I got a degree in science, bachelor's of science in physics with a minor in mathematics. We first asked Mrs. Mullins if she felt encouraged as a child to take interest in science and STEM related fields. I was encouraged a little to get into the STEM world. I feel like even then I was new to this whole concept of STEM and what that even really looked like. And I will say I was one of like the only girls who took every physics course I could. What drew my passion was definitely understanding why things work the way they did. In an AAUW study of women's underrepresentation in science, technology, engineering, and math, the study noted that implicit bias can affect individual attitudes towards others and may also influence the likelihood of cultivating their own interest in science and math. And I took one STEM class for about a week before I was, I was the only girl and I was like, I can't do this. So I got out of that um, and spent more time in a physics class, which definitely equipped me for what I was heading into. The striking disparity between the numbers of men and women in STEM has often been considered as evidence of biologically driven gender differences in abilities and interests. To diversify the STEM fields, we must take a hard look at stereotypes and biases that still pervade our culture. In high school, I did every physics class I could, but I was the only girl who ended up finishing in either an engineering slash STEM field out of college, which that to me was an interesting thing because I scored the lowest on test in high school, but everyone would ask for my homework answers. In AAUW's report titled Solving the Equation, it is stated that the representation of women in engineering and computing occupations matters. Diversity in the workforce contributes to creativity, productivity, and innovation. Women's experiences, along with men's experiences, should inform and guide the direction of engineering and technical innovation. There is a trend to increase the diversity of the STEM workforce nationwide. Mrs. Mullins was hired by NASA after college and shared some of her experiences with us. And day one of astronomy, I was like, this is it. And so uh, before that, my path was I was going to be an Imagineer at Disney World and end up there, like make these worlds and make rides, whatever. And then once I got into college and I realized astronomy it was it, I was like, okay, NASA, that's it. And so from then, I just applied on and on to NASA and Disney because I was like, what if Disney is still right? Like, I can still be an engineer. Um, which, so that led me to going to Disney World during my time at Trevecca and quickly realized that was not for me. I hated Orlando and the, the, the work just wasn't, it didn't feel right. And so that was one thing I checked off my bucket list. And then quickly after that, I got into my dream program at NASA working with a plane called SOFIA, which stands for uh, Stratospheric Observation for, oh my word, it's been a minute, infrared astronomy. And basically she's a giant plane, has a telescope in her. She flies up in the sky and uh, basically has like a garage door that opens up to our atmosphere and studies things from black holes to different galaxies and whatnot. And, that was my dream project and still love my time at NASA. Educational and workplace environments are dissuading women who might otherwise succeed in these fields. Expanding women's representation in engineering and computing will require concerted efforts by employers, educational institutions, policymakers, and individuals to create environments that are truly welcoming for women. I will say the first day at NASA, we had one big meeting together and they basically told us, if you look around at the employees here, 95, 97% of people are white males in their 50s, and they wanted to change that. And so for me, that was like, oh, this is cool. 
So that was an advantage. And so I know that even when they were picking people, they would pick one from each gender. And so that, like, that was interesting. It is shown that having role models in STEM careers that reflect you increases the possibility of entering that field or something similar. Mrs. Mullins also shared her experience with bias and lack of female role models in her studies. I wish someone had been there to encourage me as a mentor, as a woman, um, just because there are a lot of things that you just don't know. I will say if you are a minority going into the STEM field, find someone who is also a minority because they don't they also I feel like sometimes like I had female professors who it seemed like they were also still trying to prove themselves and when I would finally go and talk to them and be like I'm struggling in this they'd be like oh yeah I had the same thing happen and that's cool because you don't want to feel alone especially when you're in college in the depth of homework and tests it was sometimes challenging to try and prove myself but you know, at the same time, I feel like it put me, like I had to work harder, which was a good thing for me in the end. I was the reason I got to NASA and not because I was supported, because I wasn't. After working for Disney and NASA, Mrs. Mullins realized that her heart was in teaching students in the classroom. We asked her to talk about that transition. Is when I came back from NASA, I, what I was doing there was not fulfilling. And I didn't know what fulfillment looked like until um, I started tutoring a lot. And all of a sudden it was like, here were these students who didn't get attention in the classroom and I got to see their face when they got it. And that to me was like, that's what I want. We asked Mrs. Mullins if she had any advice for women considering pursuing their own dreams in STEM careers. I don't know, like it's important to know that your voice has to be heard and that your your opinion matters even if it's over the silliest thing and that goes to any sort of student that's not just stem and also don't give up because it's it's a great place to be and be a part of the solution and bring in that change that needs to happen because there's a lot of change that needs to happen next week as we wrap up our series we interview Jessica Elwell, Chief Operating Officer of Oxion Energy, and she shares how her family support provided her the inspiration to pursue her own dreams in STEM.